do with tribal talks, issues to do with eth 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 ethnicity, region regionalism. From here, moving forward, how can Zambians guard the peace and the unity that we've had, like you've mentioned, the smooth transitioning of power from 1991 in 2011, now 2021. What is it that we should do in order for us to continue being a shining example to the African countries? I think, especially in this season, we have witnessed um, the incoming president or the president-elect, President Haka Inde must speak about nation building, reconciliation, and unity. And I think that if we follow through with what he is preaching and what our leaders are saying now after the elections, I think that we'll be well on our way to where we need to be and where we have been. Remember the motto, One Zambia, One Nation, which we cherish so much. And I think uh, more than half the times we've lived up to that expectation. We've been fairly united. Uh, we've enjoyed relative peace. We're one of the peaceful countries in Africa, maybe even in the world. And so I think that going forward, we can uh, look back and see, especially during the election period when there were tribal talks and things like that, there's so many Zambians that came out and condemned those who are trying to divide us. Uh, uh, that's the spirit, and I think that we should build on that. We already have the foundation. We already have the basics of what it takes for us to be more unified and to guard jealously the peace that we've enjoyed. So it's just a matter of building up, encouraging those that are preaching peace, unification, and reconciliation. There are a lot of expectations now that we have the president-elect will be sworn in, should be Tuesday, um, according to our constitution, seven days after the elections, if at all there is uh, no petition. What are some of the expectations? Because we've been told that now the party that will be, forming, that will be coming into power, the president-elect, they should understand and know that the main opposition is not political parties, but Zambians themselves. What are the major expectations that people are looking forward to uh, in the name of Arende Chilem and his, uh, his cabinet to implement? I think there are so many things that um, we are looking for going forward. You know, when the new administration is sown in, when the president takes oath and he appoints his cabinet ministers and people that will run government with them, uh, he has made so many promises, not only during the campaigns, but over the years. You know that uh, President Haka Inde Ichilema has been in this for the long haul. He's been in the opposition for almost 20 years. And so there's so many things he's talked about. Uh, he's talked about, um, you know, trying to provide free education from grade 1 to grade 12. He's talked about improving the livelihood of Zambian people, improving the economy. He has talked about fighting corruption. And I think that the Zambian people hold him to that standard. In fact, in his speech yesterday, uh, President Haka Inde Ichilema said that one of the things you do with this team is to raise the bar, you know, and not to allow any mediocrity. And so we, we expect a lot of expectations, and we want to see him deliver. I think that the first 100 days when he's in office will set the tone for his administration. So we'll, we'll have to see how the economy will be doing after 100 days. We have to see how serious you'll be about fighting corruption. We'll have to see how serious you'll be about negotiating for the restructuring of debt. You know, we have so much external debt. So all these are things that the Zambian people will be looking at closely. And we wish the president-elect well, and I think that is equal to the task. He talked about forgiving those that, are, you know, uh, offended him, those that were very brutal, uh, for lack of better term. And people said, okay. And Zambians, after that speech yesterday, are, have reacted differently. So, oh, so you mean even those people that, uh, you know, committed crimes, those that were involved in corruption, you've forgiven them? Then where is the seriousness uh, that you are attaching to the issue of fighting corruption and making sure that there's zero tolerance? I think that's a very good question because I've seen some of those sentiments and expressions from people, generally, especially on social media, thinking that what the president made by saying that uh, he'll forgive those who've offended him uh, uh, to mean that maybe he will give them a pass for all the wrongs maybe the previous administration did. I think that that is contrary to what he meant. Mm. I think that the pe president was basically saying, the president-elect was basically saying that um, he won't take anything personal. You know, there were many personal attacks uh, targeted at him you know, from those that were in the ruling party, the patriotic front, the people that said all sorts of things about him personally. And I think that is what he is talking about when he talks about forgiveness and reconciliation moving forward. But when it comes to those people who may have committed crimes, 
I think that the president won't stand in the way of the Zambian people if they bring these issues before the courts of law. So, for example, you're going to see a situation where a private citizen sues someone with evidence, maybe, that they know that may be misappropriated public funds. And the president has no way that he'll stand in the way of anybody doing that. So I think that uh, people maybe misunderstood what the president-elect said. I think that he's committed to seriously letting the bygones be the bygones. I think he's committed in making sure that uh, the Zambian people have a fresh start, that actually nobody is attacking each other on a personal basis. But I think it also, he's also committed to the rule of law. If there's anybody that's committed crime, if the people involved in corruption and the Zambian people, the private citizens, bring this before the courts of law, the president, I don't think, will stand in the way of that. Mm. Uh, also, one of uh, the, the many important highlights and, and things that uh, people have been analyzing is that uh, the outgoing president, before the elections, he talked about, I'm confident of winning the elections and I believe that I'm going to be handing over power. To myself and also when the electoral commission of zambia were announcing results we saw him uh, writing that letter from state house you know saying the elections were not free and fair the secretary general also in parliament challenged the electoral commission of zambia and said you have the evidence we've complained about three provinces western northwestern and southern and um, yesterday we saw the president conceding defeat and uh, also saying he's going to hand over power what do you think would have made the president to make such a decision when previously he had talked about elections not being free and fair? I think two things. Um, number one, it was laughable to hear the president uh, say that he was going, President Lungu say that he was going to hand over power to himself. I mean, this is uh, the man who thought he was very popular. And uh, by and large, I think he was misled. You know, just before the elections, we saw opinion polls sponsored opinion polls telling us that President Lungu was going to win by 60% and 56%. And I was here, uh, I had a discussion with you, and I said these, these opinion polls are, are biased. I don't think they are reflective of what's happening on the ground. And I've been vindicted. I think that the President was told what he wanted to hear from those people around him. And uh, so he was very confident and to some extent even a bit arrogant about what the outcome would be of the election. But surprisingly, of course, the Zambian people spoke otherwise. Um, but what I think, by and large, has happened since then, after the results came in, the president has been under a lot of pressure, the current president, President Lungu, I think has been under a lot of pressure to concede power. First of all, you will recall that five, if not six, of his own colleagues, his presidential uh, candidates in the race with him, conceded and congratulated President Haka Indichinoma, even before the Electoral Commission of Zambia declared uh, the elections to be in favor of HH. So that was quite very unprecedented. We've never seen anything like that before. And also the margin itself, once the results were coming to uh, almost the conclusion uh, in terms of announcing, we saw that the margin was too big and that there's no way that the president could have, could have held on to power without any legit uh, reason to do so. Thirdly, I also think that, which I disagree with Bobby Wine, by the way, I think that the African Union observer, the former president of Syria alone, uh, and also the man in charge of the Commonwealth Observer Mission, uh, President Jikaya Kikweti of Tanzania, uh, and, and even our own former president, Rupia Banda, I think they had uh, done a, a good job. I think they worked around the clock to ensure that uh, there's a smooth transfer of power. And so this, for me, gives me confidence in some of the African bodies uh, and, and regional organization as well as continent organizations that we have, because I know the role that these former heads of states played in making sure that President Lungu looks the Zambian people in the eye and concedes defeat because the result and the Zambian people have had spoken. In these elections, at the parliamentary level, we've seen young people youthful people emerging as victorious to represent different constituencies um, in parliament examples that i can give in chilanga we have um, a, a youthful person in the name of sipo hilazo uh, mp in inkana we have uh, bino mpundu uh, in, in 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 impika we have kapianga in lumezi we have munia zulu in petaoke we have uh, jj band and these people were contesting against 
you know, people that have been on the political scene for years and the years. Heavyweights. The heavyweights. The heavyweights. So-called so -called heavyweights. The heavyweights. Uh, do you think Zambian people now have begun starting, have, have begun, uh, you know, believing in young people to deliver to their expectation? And also, what do you think these so-called big wigs went wrong in terms of not convincing the people to vote for them? I think these so-called heavyweights had become so big-headed and so arrogant that they stopped listening to the Zambian people and what the people were saying. I think that is a lesson for them. Secondly, I think that it is good for a country and it's good for democracy that we are seeing a lot of young people coming through to participate in the election process or in the electoral process. Um, also, there's a young man who has won Nalolo constituency in Western Province, mm. Imanga Wamunima, whom I know very well. He's, he's, a, he's a fairly young man. And so we are going to see... Uh, young people going to parliament, uh, and, and it's, it's a breath of fresh air. I think it is interesting that we're seeing these people come to parliament because they're going to bring new ideas and uh, they're going to say things differently. You know, when you have been um, in a certain position or seat for so long, you can get comfortable. And I think that these so-called uh, heavyweights were comfortable. Parliament was not as exciting as it should be. But with the new people coming in, young people by and large, we're going to see a very exciting parliament. Just like what we saw in South Africa not long ago when Julius Malema and the EFF the, for the first time won seats in parliament. You saw how the South African parliament had changed. I mean, they changed the face of South African politics and we hope to see that. Do we see the young people delivering to the expectation of the people that have given this have given them this mandate i'll give an example in zambia we've seen young people before uh, those that you know uh, the late president michael sata gave uh, you know an opportunity to be deputy ministers How, whenever Werason was performing in zambia they were there whatever kofi olomide was performing they were there and today as we speak none of them is in parliament others have even gone into political preview well i'm hopeful i'm hopeful i think that the breed of the young people we're seeing now are a product of a serious revolution, a political revolution in our country. I mean, we saw huge numbers of people turn out to vote in this election, maybe more than what we saw in 2011 or 2015 and 2016. And so because of that, I think that the Zambian people have a lot of interest now in our political process. And because of that, these young people, when they go to parliament, they know that their feet will be hurled to the fire. They know that the people will hold them accountable. And so what they're going to do is that they're going to be serious about their job from day one once they walk into the walls of parliament. As we conclude, uh, um, Aaron Ngambi, um, issues to do with defections. We have seen people resigning from the party that has not even existed power. They are still in power. We have seen a number of people who have resigned. And people are saying Zambians are scared. And they are even, you know, they have started talking to uh, or, or sending messages to the incoming president, the president-elect, to say, please, please, don't give these people any chance to be part of, this, of your administration. But we know that politics is all about numbers. Well, I will tell you this. I think if there will be a downfall of the UPND alliance, that will be because they've allowed or they will allow recycled politicians, and those politicians who were in the previous administration, previous government, wanting to come in. This is what happened to the Patriotic Front. Mm. If you look at what happened when President Lungu took over in 2015 and 2016, President Lungu brought in everyone that was in the MMD, the likes of Bowman Lusambo, Dora Celia, Vincent Mwale, Joe Malanji. All those were in the MMD, in the, in the administration, the government that Mr. Sata, who founded PF, had fought and defeated in 2011. And so over time, we saw what has happened. People were tired of the same recycled politicians. People don't want the same people that were in the previous government or previous administration, even some of them accused of corruption or some of them accused of mismanaging resources, being brought back into another new and fresh administration. That will frustrate the people of Zambia. That will give the UPND a false start. If the UPND alliance want to go into government and seriously do the work that Zambian people have elected them to do, they should stay away from any recycled politicians or even entertain anyone just be for the sake of numbers. They did not need these people who are in the PF government to win this election. They want it as a UPND alliance, all the partners working together, and they can deliver on the basis of that.
Thank you so much, Aaron Ngami, for making an appearance. We have to go. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. There you have it. This has been the assignment. Part two, part one, I was talking to Robert Kegulani Sentam, a politician from Uganda, also known as Bobby Wine, and we've been talking about Zambia's 2021 poor outcome. What does it mean for Africa? And uh, in the part two, on the, on the other side, I've been discussing with uh, Aaron Ngambi, who is a governor as well as a political expert, talking about the aspirations, the outcome of the 2021 elections, and what Zambian people are looking forward to after the president-elect is sworn in and he, yeah, and, and he puts his cabinet in place. My name is Kelvin Tabula, Chief Focal. Make it again tomorrow as we come back with yet another edition of the special interview on your channel of choice. Many thanks to Mavuto Piri, the producer and the director, as well as Cedric Konjera Jr. Good evening. You need to go home, sir. I need to get some rest. Two people are alike in the world, but these individuals have something in common. Life is about making the right choices. I choose protection. Excuse me, can I please have a packet of unscented ultimate condoms? Bonjour, mommy. When are you? Assist me with some change money. Okay. In fact, can I get a packet of ultimate condom? Banana scented. Whatever the situation I'm faced with, at work, at home, at play, I take control. I man up. Protection is about money up. Hi. Hello. Uh, give me a packet of ultimate condom. Vanilla scented. Oh. The OU's ultimate condoms for assured protection from STIs, HIV, and unplanned pregnancies. Use condoms.